We're installing the toilet on Janine, which is one of our first uh, first big interior jobs. So toilet's going to go where I'm sitting at the moment, and got a holding tank, which is where all of the the black border or poos and wheeze goes. And I've, I've removed the cupboard that was in here, and this tank's going to fit in against the back up there. And I'm just been shaping a piece of wood that I will fiberglass in on there to hold it and there'll be another one I will fiberglass in on the bottom so the toilet water salt water will come into the toilet with a pump and it'll pump out into the bottom of this tank there's two holes in the bottom so that's where it'll go in and there's a pipe that takes it up to the top then that's the output where it goes out which will come into this pipe here and out when I open that valve will flow out um, when we're more than 500 meters offshore uh, which is a legal thing and in the top I've got another one that'll go up out through the deck and that's where you can uh, suck it out through the marina sewage system if we ever want to do it through through that and this one here is the breather that will have a pipe that comes off it with a another valve on it and i've got to do something i hate doing and i'm going to have to drill a hole right through the side of the boat out here uh, to be able to put the breather in and obviously you need a breather so that the air can get out of the system as you as you flush it but also you need the oxygen to go in there to help break the waste down that's in here. So the breather from here, question has been asked, why does it go through the side of the boat, not out the top? And the reason is because the gases, which are mainly methane that come out of this are heavier than air, and they'll go along your side decks and drop down into your cockpit, making your cockpit smelly on those lovely summer evenings with the, uh, south pacific sunset when you're having your gin and tonic on the back deck so it always goes out the side because then the smelly gases drop down the side of the boat and are gone day two of toilet installation the mountings are nice and firmly fiberglassed in so i've used fiberglass glue behind here two screws holding them back so that's nice and firm there's one in the bottom here that is not screwed in because that's straight into the hull. This one's going into a wooden scantling behind, which is why I've been able to screw that one. They're both nice and firm. Francis has painted all of this, so that's looking a lot nicer than it did. Well, that was all day one. Day two, I have drilled a hole through the deck to be able to put the the waste outtake so this is the one in the marina with the uh, vacuum machine it's always a nervous time drilling a hole in your deck but i took some time and got that in the right place first time and then i've drilled two i've also drilled two holes in here this one here will be the outflow from the toilet coming into the tank and this one here the pipe will go from there through to the outflow outside of the boat through to here. To drill them, drilled a pilot hole first with this drill, and then drilled the hole with the, the big drill. And we've just been into Blenheim to buy a 55 millimeter hole saw because the mounting for the deck is, is a 55 millimeter, which is not, uh, not one of your normal hole sizes. That's as far as I've got now, next job is going to be to mount the tank and then put the hoses on. The positioning of the tank has been determined by where I could fit this. On the outside on the deck, this here has got to give enough clearance for the car for the Genoa um, to be able to slide past. So that meant it's got to be out this way a certain distance, which now means that I have to put a little standoff on here behind the tank to be able to make that one line up with the top of the tank. This is the hole through the deck for the vacuum pump, which you get in some marinas. So that goes straight down into the holding tank. 
and what I'm doing now is I'm just putting a bit of primer around the inside of the hole not that I expect there to be any leaks but it's always good to have a bit of primer on top of any bare wood in the toilet again holding tanks fitted that's all secure and I'm just putting on the last fitting the one that goes through the through hull here this is always a difficult one um, I've got my bung here and I've got my hammer just in case this bit here comes adrift as I'm working on this bit at the top because then water's all going to come in because this fitting at the bottom here is seized. So when we pull out at Christmas, I'm going to be replacing all of this and that valve will go directly on the fitting that goes through the hull. So this will be redone then, but for the moment, I've just got to be careful that I don't pull that bottom one off as I pull this over to put this on the top. Now this one, when I tried to put it on as a dry fit, the way it points is that way when it nips up and I actually want it to go that way. So the cunning plan was to put an O-ring underneath it, but the O-ring is exactly the same thickness as one set of threads. So it ended up pointing in exactly the same direction again. What I'm using is thread tape and I've gone around with threads as you normally do, but now I'm trying to build up a washer on the top surface that's half the length of a thread width so it will end up pointing towards the tank which is where I wanted to point. Originally I had that one on 120 degrees but it's pointing a little bit too high to the one at the bottom of the tank and you really want as little pressure from the hose. The hose is thick hose like that because you don't want pressure trying to pull this up out of the hull because anything that's pulling up, there's going to be any movement, is going to wear, work its way out. You really want it to be pushing downwards. So that's what I'm trying to accomplish with this is either no pressure or a little bit of pressure going downwards. This is the installation when we finished it. So Jabsco toilet and uh, it, it wasn't the installation that we were going to put into when we first started this journey. Our very first thoughts on this was we were going to have a toilet with a macerator pump. We were going to pump into a black water tank in the bilge and then a pump to pump out of the bilge to discharge. We went from that through to this very, very simple design because if it can go wrong on a boat, it will. And there's distinct advantages with going with something that's very simple, that's gravity fed. So the, the other features we've got of this, which I put in, was a, a valve on the vent, which when you close that valve and you uh, pump the toilet, it pressurizes the the tank so if you've got a small blockage or something where it just won't won't empty then that's always a very good first thing to do to pressurize it and see if you can push out your blockage through the uh, through the outlet it does have a caveat with it don't put too much pressure in because at some point something will give and you could end up with an absolute unholy mess another thing we did was to make sure that the outlet that's on the deck for the marina pump was directly above the outlet, the, the outflow of the uh, blackwater tank. What that meant was if you've got a blockage, you could rod it straight through. So take the um, cap off the one on the deck and you can rod straight through if you've got a, a blockage of toilet paper or something else blocking the outlet. So third point, if you look towards the uh, right of the picture, you'll see there's a vented loop. So that is on the water inlet into the toilet, salt water inlet. And that's got to be positioned higher than the water line when you're at maximum heel of your boat. So 
keep that as close to the centre of the boat as you can bring it. And, um, and it's got to be up high. Basically what that means is that the toilet won't siphon seawater when you're healed and uh, start filling your boat up. So the other way you can do it is just have your salt water inlet switched off when you're sailing. But a lot of insurance companies like to see a vented loop on the salt water inlet. So that's really it. I hope you've enjoyed the video, learned something from it. If you've got any questions, put them down in the comments and I'll respond as I can. This is an update to the original video that I published. I've been asked to give more detail about the inlet pipe that I mentioned earlier in the video. That There's a pipe on the inlet that needs to go inside and up to the top of the holding tank to uh, prevent the backflow of stuff in the tank um, back down the toilet. So this is what it looks like. The um, fitting at the bottom is the fitting that goes into the bottom of the tank for the poos and wheeze to go in. And this pipe, which I've shown fitted into that, just fits as a snug fit into the inside of the inlet fitting. And you need to cut the top so it's about an inch from the top of the tank. So the idea is when you, when you pump the tank, all of the water and waste goes up through the pipe comes out of the pipe and down into the tank so when you stop pumping the maximum that can backflow into your toilet is whatever is in the in the pipe itself so as long as you flush it through with water all that comes back into the tank should be water so this here is uh, in New Zealand this is Bernsco uh, who hold these fittings you could use any pipe that is a, a decent fit into your inlow uh, inflow fitting. Uh, the ones here are True Design and just a little plug for True Design. I know it's a New Zealand brand uh, but they're really good. They are a fiberglass composite fitting for through holes and everything else and they're very very good. Other thing to mention which I didn't mention earlier in the video is make sure you use proper sanitation hose. Um, there's proper hose for uh, black water for a good purpose it's non-permeable if you don't use it you will always end up with a smell and the hose that you use could deteriorate so try and make sure that you use the proper sanitation hose uh, it's generally a ribbed white hose so that's about it for the update hopefully that little bit of extra detail has helped <laughs>